Greetings. I hope everybody can hear me. This is my first time ever recording with the mask. I'm outside the History Museum of Mobile, and it has some really cool exhibits that I can't wait to see. Uh, all the stuff that I've been doing for Black History, this has a ton of stuff. So go check it out. This is inside the museum. Look at that. This rock was the marker between Alabama and Florida. Spoilers, it may be a replica, but this rock is all that stood between Alabama and Florida. As early as 1721, slaves arrived at Mobile Bay. Seeing in 1721, three ships arrived at Mobile Bay with cruel cargo. Prisoners captured during civil wars in West Africa and sold as slaves. And they would come up through the bay. And they were sold and shipped out to different parts of the U.S. So it's like being inside of a ship. And that's how they would have been stored. And being transported to the Americas. Wow. You can see that they had a receipt, impressment receipt, which is the purchase of a slave. You can see it down here, right here. Slaves, club axes, spades, meal, bacon, beef. Based on how tall you were, how strong you were, how skilled you were, you can see there was a price at your height. Now I'm like 6'1", so I definitely would have been up this category. But with his permission, I can go to church, live away from the factor's house, move about town, and sometimes even work on the side while keeping what I make. Now this is much better than the slaves working on those plantations upriver, but I'm still not free. Here is a life insurance policy. A lady named Sarah Walker insured one of her slaves for $334 for six months. When she appeared in America's earliest Revolutionary War, when localized independence sentiment first reached its peak in the country's history, the practice name for Charles Lynch of Virginia initially encompassed the questionable beliefs of vigilante justice. Lynching origi originally was neither racial nor necessarily lethal, as victims were flogged, tarred, and feathered, and ran out of town. However, in the post-Civil War Reconstruction South, lynching changed to fit radically intolerant and sadistically lethal ideologies. Victims were often stripped, beaten, humiliated, hanged, and burned, while spectators watched with amusement. In the radically divided Reconstruction South, Jim Crow laws and lynching were seen as conservative measures to protect the status quo against further change. Major contributors to racial violence were emancipation, lack of federal guidelines for freedmen's status, arming of African American troops, ambience and participation of local authorities, the formation of the Ku Klux Klan, society's ability to look the other way. Wow. So in 1925, John LaFleur began the NAACP in Mobile, writing 50,000 letters to the government. When it started in 1925, they had the NAACP until 1956, when they banned the NAACP in Mobile. They wouldn't come back until 1964 because they believed that the group was more of a harmful to them based on everything that was happening to Birmingham in the civil rights movement. So they actually banned the NAACP in March 22, 1981. A man was lynched in Mobile by the Ku Klux Klan who kidnapped him and hung him on the street. Eventually they were arrested and found guilty and in 2006 they actually put up a plaque for him and then renamed the street for Michael Donald. Also in Mobile had a huge KKK presence. You can see that definitely on Michigan Avenue, the Thoughtist Church, that's where they would all congregate. They even had rallies and pamphlets. 
that stuff you can visit to this day. I think Spring Hill College is still up. Also, one of the big things that this museum has is, well, because there's another museum right down the road of it, is Mardi Gras actually started in Mobile. Not New Orleans, but Mobile. Let's see, it has a lot of history of Mardi Gras. One of these days we'll have to go through the Mardi Gras Museum and check that out. But for the time being, you see all the artifacts of it. Mobile native, Hank Aaron, home run king. In fact, home run baseball, 754. Breaking Babe Ruth's career home run of 714 in 1974. There it is. That's history right there. During World War II they had a lot of women that enlisted and they were building the ships, building the weapons listed in the army in the military to help fight the war. So these exhibits are brilliant. You can even see like the Red Cross volunteer pins and patches right here. And then they captured a Japanese flag signed by the Japanese soldiers, family, friends, and neighbors. They have these like tiny houses, which are actual real houses that you can drive by. Now you can't walk inside the house, obviously, but you could look at these tall houses and see what they look like when they come in. This bathroom drives me nuts because there is a there's a toilet, toilet paper, a bidet, a long walk to the sink. This tub drives me nuts because there's a shelf over the tub, a TV in the corner, so if you're in the tub, are you facing the TV or are you facing away from the TV? Why is the TV, like, pointed at the sink? Here we go. To ancient Rome. Exciting. Here's an old Roman slingshot. They called it a onanger. Or a ram. How did this thing work? Here's a assault ram. I really like making rams heads into things. So they're gonna bust down to your door. You're using this thing. Big piece of wood, big ram. Here's an example of Archimedes screw. What it was is to transport water. So you would pull this lever and the more you twist, the water would actually come up through that screw and then it'll pour out. So one of the interesting stories about Mobile is right after Lincoln freed the slaves. I would say like maybe like a couple years afterwards there was a huge ammunitions building and on May 25th 1865 uh, building exploded just exploded and just wiped out so many square blockets of it and this photo is the only photo known photo of its existence. All right, we're back from the museum. It's been a long time since I actually did a vlog, like at a museum, showing like what to, at a museum, doing it with the mass, uh, you know, abiding by social distancing, trying not to touch too many things. Although you teach, touch a lot of things and you still want to go ahead and sanitize your hands, wash your hands and all that fun stuff. So that's important. So, I'm going to try to do some of those as best as I can. If, you know, when we go out, dork, African American landmarks. I think at this time, I, I'm kind of falling into like this P 
piece that has really invigorated me at least has motivated me a lot more than doing the theme park stuff and i've been very vocal about the theme park stuff for a long time and how i feel that maybe my voice was not as loud as others so i'm going to continue to do more lessons continue to do more videos uh discussing you know what made racism normal what made racism just integrated it to, to society but also i'll be doing more history stuff so there's a lot of other theme park channels but now i think it's my mission to go forward find history find african american history and then bring it to light and talk about it and teach it in at least some form of video where if you're watching this and you're going wow i didn't know that before i think that brings me a lot of joy rather than something that you've seen or haven't seen so and yes it has been a long time since i've seen you guys literally seen you guys like my hair is longer my beard's longer it's crazy but thanks for watching that was from the mobile history museum and i'll be doing more so i got another fun one that i'm working on so i can't wait to show you guys whenever that gets put out so hit that subscribe button hit that notification button thanks for all your support i appreciate it i'm out